Greetings once again from Sage and Finn and me, but they're too far away to actually. <laughs> right over there, playing over there. I'll uh, introduce them again just now when they approach. Um, I'm sure they'll come past me to create havoc somewhere in the room. Right, so it's uh, another seascape this week. Um, surprise, surprise. And uh, yes, let's just have at it, shall we? I had threatened to do so um, last time, uh, for the last couple of times. I think I don't have, I don't, have I done a seascape in the last, the last two pieces? I don't recall. Maybe I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> anyway, uh, what reason not to, not to have another. So, uh, Given that I have a semblance of a horizon line, I'm going to use my T-square to, to, to put it in. Um, and it's going to be approximately there, quite high up. Um, so I'm just going to kind of draw it in over there and leave that be okay so get my bearings here um, Just uh, describing the uh, the shoreline, kind of shoreline, with my Conte crown here, such as it is. Sage and Finn scratching around there. Okay, and then we've got some. Uh, We've got the beach, and we can take that line out, not partially. always happy to see another seascape so and I'm always happy to oblige I just the last piece even though it wasn't completely to my satisfaction um, it was a very interesting exercise for me in terms of playing with motion um, abstract motion so uh, so in other, in other words the creating the illusion of motion through uh, through marks on a page uh, and that I have achieved uh, so I can now apply the thinking behind that in future in future works uh, so although it wasn't exactly my favorite piece it did it had it, it, there was a valid lesson in it uh, 
and a memory, which was of the uh, the swallows of Durban North of, in my childhood. So. With this piece, we're back to Durban North once more. And, uh, and uh, for this little seascape, and we're kind of just chasing a wave in towards shoreline, the shoreline, the shore break. Well, it's, it's a wave, it's, it's basically the, the shore break line up but we we're looking at it from behind so looking at it from a uh, a pier uh, towards the shore and then looking down towards the towards the south coast towards the south towards Durban in the distance this is Durban North little girls you know they find the most um, interesting spots to to play at least they're not damaging anything where they are they they they've played havoc on my peacock feathers almost completely decimating them worrying them and toying with them until they buckle and bend and you can never actually win. <laughs> it is ongoing. Right, I am going to use a little bit of white here. And of course, there are other there are other passion is playing with wires, especially wires that are needed and wires that, when pulled, will disturb other things. And yes, this is a little little Finn, of course, coming to say hello. Say hello, Finn. There's my little girl putting the tongue out. Oh, that's sweet. Hello, little baby. <laughs> Here we go. Off you go and create havoc again. <laughs> She's definitely come out of her shell, that's for sure. My word. No longer the timid little little girl that she was. I think that uh, Sage taught her well. Well, well, well is a is a, is open to debate, but uh, she's certainly been a her educator. Gets into all sorts of mischief. Sage is is a she kind of loses interest in something. She she uh, she attacks something and gets Finn interested, and then moves on to something else. And Finn stays and and does the job properly.
interesting dynamics feline dynamics <laughs> and of course once again that interests me because there's always a comparison to, to how we are how people are human dynamics which is always fascinating to me so today we're going to establish our Composition, well, composition is pretty much established already. Uh, and part of the composition, of course, is, is light and shade. Uh, contrast and, and how it works dynamically with the, the image as a whole. And to me, it's something that either makes or breaks the, the artwork. Composition-wise, my, my, my previous piece didn't work that well. I kind of, it, it got too busy and too confusing. So in that, it was more an exercise, but in, so it was a study in technique. So I won't sell that piece, I'll keep it, but uh, at least I won't put it up for sale. I'm actually not even going to to put it up on uh, on Facebook and Instagram, etc. Either I'll just only the videos of that particular that particular piece will remain. The rest is just as I say, it's a, it's an exercise, so I'm happy for it to remain such. This piece is almost done. It's it's almost one big knot now. More havoc goes on in other rooms now. <laughs> I'll be adding some colour in today as well because this is a fairly fast moving piece by the looks of it. Let's see if it's showing that showing up that already. So we'll just get busy with the first the first sort of layer of charcoal and white chalk pastel and then I shall start to begin to, to start adding some more some color oh my word what 
is may or may not use any compressed charcoal because it doesn't have any very very dark areas that except for that little little uh, ridge of of uh, the sand dune of the foliage on the sand dune um, and even that's not that dark it's actually it, it's actually got enough chalk uh, uh, darkness and charcoal and then I'm going to use a little bit of uh, dark olive olive green to Finish that one off. Yes, so as I'm always maintaining uh, my work at least, and I speak for myself only, is that uh, I try to feel the subject rather than depict how I see it, if that makes any sense. And, and, that's, and that is the essence of my workshops, my being the expression workshops, which seem to be quite successful so far, um, where people get to discover whether you're an artist or not, whether you're a novice or a, yeah, whether you want to become an artist or you want to explore that or not. Um, is irrelevant. Being the expression is all about creating, how we create. Um, I might be more accomplished as an artist than, than, than others and less than others as well. Um, and yet, for me, being an artist is, is, is all about and this this journey of discovery that I've that I embarked on at the end of March 2020 was really about learning about myself as an artist, as a human being, as a person. It wasn't just about exploring technique. It was about how the art, the makings of markings on a page, the use of my hands, picking up a charcoal stick or a paintbrush or a palette knife, how it taught me the lessons that it had that the lessons that it holds for me we each in each of us are our own best teachers uh, and that I've maintained for a long time uh, it's how we it's how we learn and what is what we seek out to be taught is what's important and those are the lessons that that come through in 
discovering one's one's uh, inner creator. We are each and every one of us creators. <coughs> Applying ourselves to source, to source energy, and allowing it to flow through us. And that's why I have discovered along the way, by fluke, that source works through me as an artist in terms of the expression of my work. Um, without me actually having to apply myself consciously to it. Because if I was, I wouldn't be working away here and being able to talk to you at the same time. And because I'm focusing on my words, I'm concentrating on what I'm telling you, I'm putting together the words to tell you, and my hand is just doing its own thing in terms of this artwork just coming together of its in and of its self which is which is fantastic which, and there's that there's the lesson that we should allow allow stuff to happen just allow it to now it just start coming about, coming to being without worrying it to death, having to micromanage the process. Anyway, so yes, that's that that's that kind of led me towards that realization, and guided me towards sharing what I had learnt during the process of the last two and a half, two, two, last two, two years, two and a quarter years. Um, through these sessions that I started calling my RT lockdown because I I started them at the beginning of this whole lockdown that resulted from from the dreaded lurgy called COVID. Um, started at the beginning of lockdown when, when we were all in isolation, and I wanted to to share with with others whilst I was sitting here alone yeah so that's that's how that's how this came about so it started as my RT lockdown and then eventually I thought well we've been in lockdown for so long and it hasn't been lifted in all this time you're still we're still under lockdown of of sorts even though it's not really Nobody really recognize it, recognizes it for what it is, but uh, so I've decided, I had decided to change, change it to what it is now, which is my artsy musings, because that's exactly what I've been doing all along, is, is musing. Hmm. Right. Start to bring in some, some of the white bits here as well. I'll take this as far as I possibly can before adding, before adding any colour in. And I've only been going for what, twenty minutes, twenty-five minutes. And I shall be adding 
and introducing a wee bit of acrylic as well to this piece towards the end which looks like it'll be during the next session So as you can start to start to to see, yeah. we're looking from behind the wave as it surges in towards the shore. Not any great big great big roller. It just shows the energy of its expression. The, uh, the sense of motion, motion of the ocean. Hello, little sage. Are you going to come and say hello to everyone? Eh? Not really, no. Okay. Yes, maybe you will. Hey, there's little Sage coming to say hello. Hey, yes, there we go. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she's another one like, she's a bit like Kit Kat, in fact doesn't really like to be picked up. Now, I don't know like being picked up, but she, she, she kind of doesn't enjoy it as much as Finn does. Finn likes to, to, to pick up and be kissed and cuddled. <laughs> Sage, not so much. Oh, there's Kit Kat as well. He's, he's in and out. He's not gonna come here. In fact, I won't, I won't introduce Kit Kat today because the other ones are all around and he gets very, very uptight when he gets picked up when there are, the others are, are around. So I have to spend some time with him elsewhere when he's, and, 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 and they all interact so well outside when, you know, then he, then he can play with them as actually, and, uh, and uh, we're, sorry, I'm just introducing some colour here. <laughs> Thought I'd let you know. Um, yeah, so out, when, when they're outside and there's freedom of the space and what have you, then then he will he will loosen up and he'll play with them. But indoors is another story. He doesn't like the, 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 the confines and he hisses at them and gets all uh, huffy and puffy and doesn't he doesn't like it so I don't I don't push that I think it'll, it, if, if he ever does get to sort of cuddle with us <laughs> You know, and he would he would always come and join me on my bed or wherever. He come and sit by me. Now he doesn't do that, which is quite sad. Even though he, we spend a lot of time together, but uh, 
he doesn't join us anymore. And if he ever does, it will take time in any case. But, uh, yeah, as I said, these feline dynamics are quite interesting. Maybe once they have be the, the kittens have been have been uh, spayed. Maybe then I don't know. But at this point, he's accepted them that they are a fixture of our lives and that. Uh, and that's okay. He's okay with that. But he's just the grumpy old man now. As I say, interesting dynamics. Right, so I've been, whilst I've been talking, I have been introducing some pastels, chalk pastels, and uh, I've, I've brought in a an indigo, well almost indigo blue, and uh, another couple of hues of blue, Huey Lewis in the news, and a couple of greens as well. I've got I've got this green, which is a kind of a mm, lightish forest green, and uh, I don't. As you people must know by now, I don't. I don't use the fancy names for colours and things. And I don't know. I, I I just use whatever takes my fancy is what I call it. So sort of a light forest green, and then a darker darker olive green. That's what I've been using so far. I shall definitely be introducing more, a, a, a wider variety of color as well. Um, in fact, case in point right now, I'm going to bring in some the peppermint green. <laughs> so I don't, yeah, I don't know what green this is. It doesn't say. I don't use fancy, expensive Windsor and Newton, which would probably tell me what exactly what the colour is, uh, or Faber Castell or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. These work really well. These particular pastels are called um, Mungo, Mungyo. M U N G Y O. Mungio, and they they're actually lovely actually really do the trick there is another brand I forget what this is which I also enjoy I can't quite these are made in uh, these are made in China <laughs> surprise surprise but um, I don't know what the brand is. I've lost the I've lost the uh, the box. Um, but they also I enjoy them because they are they are a, a kind of an a, 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 my word a range of of colours that is slightly on the dusky side, um, if you know what I mean. So they they're not these uh, vibrant colours. They're slightly they're slightly dull. But they actually work really well for me because they they provide a, a they they provide a range that is in between the spaces that the other one has, um, and of course I haven't got the, the full you know a big set of forty eights or sixty fours or whatever the hell they they come in. Um, they're far too pricey. So what I like to do is is get a is get a a fairly decent range of say let's say 24 colors which provide more than enough 
and many of which I, I don't actually get to get to use um, and um, or at least I don't get to use them that often um, and then the colors that I use the most I can I can then purchase loose individually which works fine for me hello little Finn did you come to say hello hey you come to climb up on my jeans and and come and have, have, have a hello to everyone hmm? so that's the story behind the, the pastels I really would like, however, to start working more on. Uh, okay, we're going to bring it, bring in a little bit of lilac here as well. Um, I really would like to start working more with with acrylics. It's just for me to do that every day is prohibitive in at this point in terms of cost. I can't afford to get be getting canvases um, and and uh, acrylic paints and what have you every week to, to work on a piece every week like this it's just prohibitive at this stage if I had a materials sponsor if a company was to a company that manufactures Pastels was to sponsor me. Yay! So please, if you if anyone knows of anyone who is in a in a company that that manufactures pastels, I would love to hear from you because I'm more than happy to to promote your materials. Even Sage will help promote your materials. Ow! And ow, and Finn is climbing up my leg. Stop it. Goodness me. Um, yes. So, uh, as my YouTube channel grows, and it is growing slowly, but it is, um, I want to find the means. To accelerate that process, Sage, uh, Finn, either you're going to come up or you're not. But stop scrabbling at my leg. My word, those talons are getting longer and bigger and just more vicious. Um, yes, so I'm very, very much open to that. Always presents a lovely opportunity to start playing a bit more or you know if, if it's if you if you provide um, acrylic paints as well then or oils for that matter <laughs> I'm, I'm open to it because I really want these processes for me are all of the, are are very much exploratory so I do try to, uh, you know, I, I look at what color <laughs> these two. Um, oh my word! Um, I look at what color means. I look at textures of different materials, um, of different pastels and contour crayons and charcoals and what have you. So, um, it's important. Um, so, I am, as I said, more than happy to... Ow! Oh, Jesus! Man, that was just a vicious little... She tried to jump onto my hand and then sink her little limpets into my... into grappling hooks and... Uh, unintentionally, but took me a... Took me by surprise. My word. 
<laughs> Never a dull moment <laughs> in this in this household. Leave me alone now. Go and find something else to to bug. Oh, word. Enough already. It's drawn blood. Gosh. Finn. Goodness me. Go. Oh, have a bit of pity with, for me in my bloody hands. Wow. She is the most delicate and gentle little creature, but she doesn't know the, the viciousness of those claws just yet. Sage, what are you messing with here? Have you two come to bug me on purpose, eh? Have you? Oh word, that was really quite a little little sage, what are you doing, love? Hey? What are you doing? So I'm going to use my eraser a little bit here. Yeah, so sorry for the uh, the uh, loud interruption. <sighs> Word that took me by surprise. And shock and pain. <laughs> Doesn't often do that. But my hand was on my leg and she tried to jump up onto my thigh and my hand was in the way so that got the the brunt of it but you start this rubbish and I'm going to move you both away promise you I'm not taking that kind of stuff it's not not tolerated a little bit of lilac up top there Come on up then. If you're going to come up, come up. My word. I'm not going to have that again. How are we doing for time? Uh, five, ten, about almost 15 minutes. Just a little bit over 15 minutes left. Yes, better you go off and play elsewhere. So just bringing in the sky a little bit here. Just a little bit of, of texture and to complement the sea. Some of you will remember the days when I I didn't used to describe the sky. I didn't. It, I used to leave the sky blank, um, the grey of the paper. And I uh, I used to I used to want to allow the the sky the the, the eye to fill in what was above, based on the experience of what was below, the sea. It kind of worked um, at the time as well, but, but, but latterly I've been, I've been 
depicting the sky as well. Yeah, you know, we go through phases, don't we? <laughs> So yes, yet another, yet another pathway or or a intersecting pathway of my of my journey of 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 learning and discovering my my particular style and techniques and what have you. As I've said, I, I you know I didn't have a any formal. I've never had any formal art classes per se, aside from aside from Tech Technicon College, um, graphic design. Part of that was was figure drawing and object drawing, of course, as well. Um, come up then, if you want to. That's me. Um, But those are not forgotten, but they were a long time ago. What I have, what I've learnt in recent, in more recent years, I've taught myself uh, in terms of technique and use of use of. I never have, and I, I, I was saying to somebody the other day, and I've and I've mentioned it, made mention of it before. Is that I never used to enjoy either charcoals or pastels, which is very very odd because it's a medium and and a combined medium, mind you, and, um, that I that I now enjoy thoroughly enjoy, and I've come to to kind of make it my own in in terms of uh, the mixed media side of things because very few people you know very few artists actually out there come who who think to combine to combine uh, pastel and charcoal they assume and this is this is the thing about making assumptions that 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 have no basis until we actually work with it so we get told you know, maybe what we hear something we hear something we're told and we just accept it so people are often surprised by the when they hear that I'm using charcoals and pastels together. And very people realize that that actually charcoals and chalk pastels, mind you, not oil pastels. I hate the things. I hate working with oil pastels, but that's just me. Others others really enjoy working with oil pastels. But you see, charcoal won't won't go with oil pastels. So if you have, if you've only had an experience with with oil pastels, you'll never get to discover that charcoal, being also powdery in its application, works extremely well with with chalk pastels, soft pastels as as they're otherwise known. Um, yeah. So these are the things that I've learnt along the way, not having actually had. Um, Um, had having worked with either before, so uh, well, not 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 that I really enjoy it, but uh, yeah, I came from a point of not knowing, so it it, it was then a, a it was then just simply discovering by default that these mediums work together, not by assumption that they didn't, which is really rather limiting assumption and that's what we do every day we make assumptions and assessments and we draw conclusions based on those assumptions without actually establishing whether they are they have relevance or not
So yet another lesson from my artsy musings pages. <laughs> Now little Finn is sleeping, well she's trying to make herself cosy on my thigh which is quite a difficult exercise in balancing but she's managing somehow, won't she? Yes, so during our next session we'll begin to work more with line, more with uh, um, working with different colors to create more depth and form. But as of now, I'm more than happy with the uh, colors that are coming out, how they're utilized, etc, etc. So we shall also be bringing in a little bit more contrast with charcoal. I might even bring in some compressed charcoal on second thoughts. Who knows? See what tomorrow brings, huh? little girl with the vicious talons so I've now I've now brought in quite an extensive range of colors, um, four or five greens, uh, a couple of different lilacs, three or four blues, yeah, so all of which bring in subtle subtleties of color that that build on the richness of form with the sea, with the, with the ocean. The character, the being of the ocean in this particular instance, in this, in this, in this momentary capture. even brought in like a mustard yellow and dark mustard color um, and I shall also be in oh I've also introduced a couple of uh, other sort of more on the on the sandy side of things towards the the ochres and and that sort of thing up on the beach there and I'll introduce a couple more during the next session. So it's always, to me, the ocean is, is not just green or blue or even just a combination of green and blue. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's multifaceted. It's got, it's got depth that you can see into. Um, it's got 
surface it's got it's got the white of the foam that's formed um, it's got the reflections and the refractions of light um, so that is all about establishing the mood and character of the ocean so you've got to be able to envisage and, 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 and see more than what is what we assume here we're back to assumptions again so to really observe on a much deeper level and that cannot be really taught to us we can discover it or we can be guided or we can be given perspectives um, but we can't actually be taught how to be how to really observe it's not a there's no formula to it there's no process there's no there's no lessons or tutorials on, 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 on how to observe we have to discover that for them for ourselves and but what I try to do is offer uh, offer some perspectives that can then bring about that discovery for oneself that's so that's what i set about in terms of my 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 workshops in in the in, in, in the uh being the expression as well as the art of listening and there are two workshops that i really am working now at, at, at getting getting going talking to people having conversations about about them um, yeah because the art of listening has a most profound corporate impact in business how we the you uh, know establishing <coughs> The, uh, the conversations and relationships taking place. Uh, so talking to people about that and, and getting those going and then also getting them going online so that I can offer them to a, offer these teachings to a much broader audience, global audience. I think that so far um, so good <laughs> with this piece um, we have the gist of it so tomorrow is about now creating more definition and line and uh, more contrast at this point it's looking a little bit smooth and whatever which is great because I've established the coloring and all of that so now I can move into something a bit more <clears throat> oomphy um, and expressive with 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 my charcoal work um, yeah establish the, the subtle lines of, of on the shoreline where the where the water has now surged up and has come come back again and yeah so some subtleties there uh, Yep, so tomorrow we shall work on that during our next session. So I think I shall end it off here. So thank you for joining um, today. Thank you for caring and sharing. Um, I really always appreciate you uh, um, sharing my work. Um, and uh, any new subscribers uh, or anyone new to the channel, welcome, of course. And... Uh, and uh, 
and to do hit the uh, subscribe button and uh, and the bell icon of course so that you get notified of any future uploads so uh, yes hope you're enjoying the process so far with this little piece and uh, do tune in again on the morrow so in the meantime oodles and oodles of toodles and uh, and uh, be good be kind be gentle be caring be loving etc etc so until we meet again Take care, folks. Have a fantastic day ahead and uh, and catch you again next time. Bye. Bye from, from Finn. <laughs> and don't forget to doodle.